Hi, I'm Antilles and welcome to episode 15 of Kerbal Space Endeavor. The last episode was missing a few video files, so here as promised we have a view of our base on Minmus. We have a Kerbitat and we have an aeroponics bay which will give us later on some oxygen, much needed oxygen. And we have a colony control center and a PDU unit which will give us power even when we're on the dark side of the planet. So yeah, there are still a lot of things missing. We still need a science um, a science lab and we will need a mining drill so we can harvest some carbonite and transfer it into any kind of fuels that we need. So yeah, the base is coming along right now. There is no one living here so far, but that will change as we bring more parts to Minmus. So yeah, more parts are needed. We have a new launch. This is the much needed science lab, which allows us then to refresh our scientific equipment if we are using it up. So just a standard procedure job with the launch stage that you've seen before and as always the decoupling works just as pre uh, intended and yeah here we have a view of the vessel that is going to Minmus again. We have two hydrogen tanks and up here we have a rover and the science lab and the rover will already bring uh, the capability of starting to harvest some science from Minmus. Um, there actually are two Kerbins on board. It's Lembus and Murford Kerman, which we will need. And you see I did put on some docking ports there on the side so we can refuel the um, the trucker. Ugh the trucker because the docking port where we usually dock is blocked off by the rover so I had to adjust this a little bit for this to get working and this time we're gonna carry this cargo the other way around but you will know why and how in just a minute so yeah we set ourselves up again for an encounter with Minmus you've seen it before and we're doing it again Let's skip ahead a little bit where we get into a stable orbit and now you will see what is going on. So Murford Kerman is getting out and he's getting into the rover, lander, scientific craft, whatever. We haven't found a name for it yet. And we're decoupling. Now this craft has ion engines on board and with these ion engines it will jump from space to space around Minmus and collect science. And if you remember, I do have fine print installed. It is a mod which gives us new uh, contracts. And one of the contracts states that we get to a certain location and pretty much retrieve some data there by driving around. Now, what you just saw was that when we run out of power, I have these two blue little things on the side, which are capacitors. So I can charge up the capacitors and unload them if I'm getting low on energy. So yeah, we have a successful landing on Minmus and I was trying to use ScanSet to find where I need to go until one of my viewers uh, told me that you can just click on one of the um, one of uh, the locations I need to go to and they pop up on the navigational system. So let's do some science. Closer study reveals that Minmus does indeed not generate a magnetic field. The material space states the low temperature has frozen one of the liquid samples into a sort of ice cream. Was it green before? And um, what does uh, the mystery goo tell us? The goo appears to be licking its lips? You're recharging your oxygen levels on your suit. 
Okay, and seismic. The lake beds rumble periodically. Perhaps the tidal forces are causing some reheating under all that ice. Okay, so yeah, we gather some science, we move along, and then it is just a matter of driving to the specific places that we need to be and to fulfill these contracts and it is fairly important that we complete these contracts because we still are a little bit troubled money-wise but once we complete these contracts we should be a little bit better off again so yeah this was a real tedious process and if you look in the top right corner of the screen just now one of the green um, marks came on so we reached our next target and we had to do this for the next two targets as well but I'm not gonna show that we're just gonna jump right ahead to where we complete the contract and as you can see we get a lot of money we even get a little bit of science for this and yeah I figured we still have about five hours of oxygen water and food on board better say in the suit of Murford so let's jump up to the second contract right there because we do still have enough xenon gas on board and yeah let's just jump ahead to the landing where we just land on two wheels <laughs> because the SAS that is on top of the craft is so strong that the uh, way that we are oriented stays the same even when we're tilting over <laughs> So yeah, we ran out a little bit of electric charge here because we're out of the sun. So what we had to do is we had to wait for the planet to rotate within the sun's range. So now we're all charged up again. And we can move on to our next target where we're supposed to be. So I find these contracts quite interesting and cool. It's just uh, really... Um, yeah, not too much fun driving around on Minmus because the gravity is just that low. But as you can see, there's driving involved, uphills, then there is falling over, using reaction control wheels to spin around, do some tricks, do some flips, and yeah, wobble around. <laughs> But yeah, once we got that thing under control again, we complete the contract, as you can see in the top right corner of the screen. And now it is just a matter of getting back to the base in time before Murford Kerman freezes to death, starves to death, or dies of dehydration. So we are at a third of our fuel tank of xenon gas, and we have to make it back in time and you saw me here accelerating more towards to the right of the base and as you just saw that was needed because the rotation of the planet cancels my initial acceleration out but yeah we do get there we do have a incoming landing right there with a little bit of xenon gas left which we can actually use to get some more science because we are here why not take additional science and here we are coming down as always a lot of this is time accelerated sometimes by times four sometimes by times eight and uh, yeah we have a broken tire but that is no problem at all because we do have a pilot on board which can who can get out and of course get down there without breaking a panel and fix it there we go we have a fixed tire now he's just gonna get back in and once again low gravity driving well more or less driving it's more like drifting over the surface back to the base okay now we'll just have to collect all of the science that we had or actually we don't let's just get inside but 
when we do gonna get inside, um, it gives us a trouble and it says we can't get inside because then all of the data that we have, the AVA report and the surface sample, would be deleted. And that would be rather unfortunate. I don't know why that is, but to subside that, I went into the other craft over here, our mechanical crab. Moving on, it is, as you can see here, um, the base, the science part, made a complete rotation around the planet with while we were on the surface, which put us into a perfect spot for getting to our base. Um, as you do know, while recording, um, I do stream all of this and then I use the recordings to make these YouTube videos. Somehow this time I forgot to kill my webcam, so you guys have to, yeah, accept the fact that there's this small little itty bitty of me in the top right corner of the screen. Um, yeah, so we switch the craft around so we have the right side up. We get into an unstable orbit and then ditch the extra fuel tank. And from then on it is just a normal the orbit procedure and landing procedure as you have seen in previous episodes. Even though this thing is a lot lighter than the last two cargos we brought along. And yeah, it's just a normal easy, easy landing. Minimus gravity l makes landing, yeah, a cakewalk on a cake planet. Well, it's not a cake planet, it's more of like an ice cream planet. <laughs> But let's jump ahead right to the landing. And we wobble around a little bit right here. But we do get it stable. We have a lot of SAS on board and we do get that to work. And yeah. So I did want to get out to um, get into the crane and move the science part around until I realized there is someone already in the crane and we have a problem. I did not bring a docking uh, ring along so I cannot connect the science uh, base or science lab to the base which is rather unfortunate and yeah mistakes are paid for and we will have to bring additional docking ports in future episodes to finally connect these pieces to the base. Ah, yeah, it was late. I did forget some things and yeah, that's just how things happen. However, we do get all of the science that we collected, put it in the science lab and process it. And while we're here, I thought, hmm, why not bring along more science? We still have some more xenon gas and we find some midland biome nearby. So Lembus Kerman gets out and he's gonna connect our rover right here with the science lab and when you connect things with Kerbal attachment system with these pipe and points it gives you the so pretty much the game thinks they are one craft so they're like connected with a talk docking port which then allows me to refresh the Sunians, uh, well, uh, junior science bay and the mystery goo container so after we complete this, we just get this thing unhooked, slap it back onto the science lab, and then get back in, start over, and get to the place we want to be. And that is a Midlands biome coming right up, right, almost there, almost there. We didn't completely make it, so we actually drove the rest of the way because I wanted to save some xenon gas for the trip back. Because driving back and forth just takes a long time. This is 16 time times acceleration and you can see it still takes some time. And we have some two-wheel driving right there. But let's do some more science that we haven't gathered before because yay, science. And the science tells us like the goo wants to bite and the surface sample will tell us probably something interesting as well. Keep in mind some of the science we have already gathered with the lander and what was Lembus doing right there? Well, I like think he likes spinning. So the surface sample reads, you realize that the ground here looks more like cookie dough than mint ice cream on the flatlands. Your mouth starts to water. 
And the EV report reads, the low gravity would make driving around difficult on Minmus. Yeah, you don't say. It's more like drifting than driving. So after a view recommended, we have a new name for our rover, which is the Minmus Jumper. Which kind of reminds me of the name from the crafts of Stargate Atlantis. What were they called? I think like Puddle Jumper or something. I really missed that show. That was an awesome show, even though the original SG-1 was probably one of my favorite shows ever. And uh, yeah, let's get back to business. We do refresh the rover again. And then Macmon Kerman is once again heading back home towards Kerbin to bring new stuff. So yeah, our base has two living members right now, Lembus and Murford Kerman and Macmon Kerman is on his way home. However, on our way home, we come up on a alarm clock and things are going to start to be more interesting now. We are switching over to our Duna satellite, which comes up to one of his maneuver nodes. And we will change this so we have a nice and good encounter with Duna. We will have to make additional changes once we hit an app webs pretty close to our encounter because we want to come up uh, in a north uh, uh, polar orbit and for that we will have to change our trajectory but that will have to wait another 189 days. But yeah, future missions could be Drez. There is a window coming up, but that will be in future episodes. First of all, we jump back to our space truck and go in for an aerobrake. Because aerobrakes do save us some fuel, and saving fuel means saving money, which, once again, we are quite low of. But this time, when we go into aerobraking, I wanted to do this from the internal view. And I must say, internal view is really nice with the raster prop mod. And even the gauges and everything, it just looks so nice. And it just gives it a certain feeling, it's just magical. So yeah, we do have a normal aerobrake. And nothing falls apart. And if you remember, we left still one stage that brought the science lab in orbit. Uh, here in orbit and there was still some fuel on board which I thought let's use it let's transfer it in and then we're going to deorbit it because why waste some fuel and things when it's already in orbit so yeah once again just a launch stage going back home whoo yeah now I think Macmon Kerman was in or in space for a long long time and I think it is time for a crew change. Not only because crew changes could keep up the morale, which doesn't really matter in the game, but it's important anyway. The other thing is that we do have a lot of science in the space truck that we brought back and we want to retrieve it. So yeah, we have Desbo Kerman being our new space truck pilot and Macmon is coming back home from his long journeys in space and he will probably be happy to feel some gravity underneath his feet again or at least more gravity than there was on Minmus. And we do make it back home with Macmon and we have a safe landing and with a little bit of low time he was 80 days in orbit and he gathered a lot of unique ribbons right here. So yeah. And we have over a thousand signs right now which enables us to unlock new things. Like the big satellite they just want to need. So yeah, a lot more stuff coming up. Thank you guys for tuning in. My name's Antilles and until next time.